today and we're going to start from absolute scratch and kind of see where we end up you know in the course of you know two-ish hours or so so thanks for being here thanks for tuning in watching later ask great questions because there's going to be a lot of things i don't think about uh you can help me on that end all right um Kind of have a camera in my face here but i don't know I, i'm always trying out new vantage points trying to see if i can get a little bit better of a uh, an angle for everybody so uh it's highly uncomfortable for me so maybe it'll be better for you <laughs> we'll see all right um let's see so yeah so we're going to talk about uh painting birds um and i call this the easy way one of the things I think we tend to do is we focus on painting individual feathers or some of the lines and and really all of that can be achieved with brush stroke and color uh, instead of thinking about it in terms of like oh I need to paint this so that it looks like a feather instead we're gonna pay close attention to a few brush strokes and a few color shifts and changes and you're gonna see how that um, goes a long way. So let's kick it off. I'm going to start off by um, getting a little bit of uh, my, my black mixed up. So like I said, I've tried to not do a single thing here so that uh, so you could watch kind of it all unfold. Um, my, my mixed black is uh, just burnt sienna here, a little ultramarine blue. And it's a, it makes a really nice chromatic black. Um, it's made of color, you know, rich, rich color. And when, you know, when you begin applying it and when we begin mixing all the other colors together, uh, then it really starts working. So I'm, I'm just taking a look at um, uh, this, this little bird here. And I'm, I'm gonna say to myself, all right, where do, where do I wanna begin? And I'm gonna start, I mixed up my black, and I'm gonna start some of the darkest points I see. So, you know, if this is the whole thing, you know, uh, certainly the the eye is rather dark. Um, and so, you know, we could just kind of start a little bit there. Uh, the beak, get a little bit of that dark there in the beak. There here exists down near the bottom of the leg. Um, quite dark there. The other one that's in the shadow is pretty much dark all the way down. Brush stroke got a little thick there, that's all right. We'll come back with uh, some color from from the background to, to work that back in. And <clears throat> kind of get a little more thinner do about the same here. You know, it gets, seems, seems like it gets a little dark here, and and then really, you know, those are some of the places that I think are the most intensely dark, um, and uh, the, those would be good points for us to just kind of clue in to while we're working. Um, all right. I like I, I just like a little bit of a start there that gives me some uh, some fixed points with uh, which I can begin working so Joan how you doing <laughs> it is cold uh, the, the world must be cold um, because it, it just got a little chilly a little more chilly here in the states in the center so um i i couldn't agree more <laughs> good to have you thanks for thanks for being on okay we're we're, we're tackling the uh, tackling birds today we're going to try to really keep things simple um and you know use uh kind of this bigger i've got a size six um you know utrecht uh 239 series brushes and um i'm going to start mixing some of these darker values i see on the underside of the breast uh, the cast shadow um, and the underside of the of the, the feathers here, 
And uh, so, so right now I've got out uh, titanium white, uh, yellow, um, cadmium yellow, I think it's a medium, uh, yellow ochre, cad red, um, cerulean, burnt sienna, and ultramarine blue. And then I also have viridian and alizarin crimson. And really this is pretty much if my palette day in and day out. <laughs> it always pretty much looks like this. Um, these I don't use, I tend to not use as much, but I find kind of the more I have them out, I'll like, oh, you know what that needs? That needs just a little bit of this or that. So uh, I, I find a good day. How about, so I'm trying to keep the palette a little tighter so that you can see everything I mix and hopefully it makes a little bit more sense as we go. Okay, um, I think I really wanna start off with getting some of like this darker area. It's kind of a, a warm gray. Um, kind of reflecting what ultimately is going to be a stack of bricks that I have the uh, little robin sitting on. Uh, and this is, of course, kind of a, a mix mash of, uh, of images. Uh, really loved this. It was a little taxidermied um, robin that I found on an Instagram page four years ago. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I saved it because I was like, ooh, I just really want to... Uh, give that guy a little painting and um, and so so here we are okay um, since I have my uh, black already already mixed here um, if I'm wanting to build a gray you know it's it's as easy as we all know it to be and I'm just gonna add get a little more of that black um, take some of the white and begin kind of working that in so I can go back and forth with those and the nice thing about making this black is I can I can tilt it a little more to the burnt sienna side if I want, and I think that might be appropriate for this um, underside. Um, and uh, I can, I find that that is uh, it's just really helpful. Sometimes it needs to be a little warmer. Sometimes it needs to be a little cooler. So I, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna this initial phase. I'm not gonna think too hard about it. Um, there'll be time to think hard about it. You know, at least for our times, um, I'm really going to focus on, I'd like that to be a little warmer. Also, I might be being tricked by, you know, my, my ground layer, this kind of rubbed in layer here of raw umber, which is, of course, very warm. And so that may be kind of tricking my eye, making that look cooler than it really is. We won't really know until we get some background color in, but we'll, we'll get there when we get there. My volume is very low. Wow. Uh, I don't know that I, I'm, I'm just going to have to speak up. I don't know that I have much power here. Let me see um, what I can do here. Check, check. Yep, I've got it about as high as I can. The gain's all the way up. I might be able to change out the the uh microphone maybe i don't know i'm i'm sorry joan uh it may be just kind of the way this one is this time i'll try to speak up a little bit more um but i tend to get quiet <laughs> um not really sure why that's the case this time around but i feel like all the settings are exactly where they normally are <laughs> so um, my, my apologies. Okay. I'm, I'm looking at getting a little more and, uh, kind of underneath here and, you know, and I'll get some of the specific colors a little more clearly, uh, when, uh, when we kind of begin building the second pass, but at least starting here and really getting it rolling is, it's kind of where we're at right now. Okay, I like that. And I'm going to continue. I see some areas that are still pretty dark back here. Um, I'm going to need to get... This is a canvas uh, rather than linen. So it's a little... Uh, the weave is a little uh, heavier. So I'm kind of needing to put a little more paint down. a little more wide in here. Kind of see some of those marks. 
And the, the, the true beauty of doing feathers, doing birds, is, is really trusting to kind of the brush stroke to tell the story. Um, you know, don't worry as much um, about um, getting those little little bits of details. We're, we're going to get there, um, but it'll, it'll just take some time. All right. See the little uh, feather there sticking out. And, and you can pay attention to those. Like those, those are the things that are like, yeah, we're, we're going to get some of that fun, some of the fun things that are happening, you know, and whatever this little area beneath there is a little warmer right underneath, you know, just like, okay, I'm going to put that in too. Okay, so uh, since I've you know I've been working in this pile here, it was my gray. Now I'm I'm looking to the back of the robin here, and I can definitely see that the color. If this was kind of a warm gray here, this is this is kind of my game of comparisons. This was a, a bit of a warm gray here, and then uh, this feels a little cooler, a little greener. So you know I'm gonna just take a little bit of that viridian and mix it in with that gray. And I'll, I'll begin working that in there. I don't know that that did it quite there. I'm gonna add some yellow ochre uh, to, to just give it a little more of a yellowy appearance. Because even though, obviously we know there's, there's not green per se on the robin, um, but I, I think those, those Kind of painterly instincts when you see something you're like you know what i think is happening there i think that's a little bit of uh you know a little bit of green um, go with those those are those those can be good sometimes they run things too so um all right so um uh, i've noticed how okay as a, as the light you know the, the light is brightest right here on the breast and right below the eye um, but, you know, similarly on the back here, we get a little bit of a, a value bump. And so I'm going to kind of work into there. I'm, I'm keeping things very loose, very brush strokey. The more uh, stroke that I kind of leave in, the more that it's going to feel, you know, looking at it later, you're going to say, wow, that I feel the texture of the feather. Uh, the more I try to change that and blend it, you know, the worse off I'm going to get. So even when we get this blocked in and we begin working in and adjusting some of the edges and, and things like that, there's going to be a moment um, uh, where we're, we're really kind of focusing on how we move the brush. And um, while that's a little harder to kind of put your finger down on when you're saying, okay, how do, how do, I, how do I paint this bird? Uh, you will find... Um, that ultimately your your paintings are much more successful uh, with just a few changes, a few things, uh, a few, just a little bit of attention paid here and there. I like mixing a lot of neutrals. So uh, one, of the, one of the funnest mixes is that I like is the cerulean with uh, with um, burnt sienna, and it makes this kind of weirdly uh, greenish. Blue, which I, th I think in some of these areas might look really nice. Yeah, I think I think that's Yep, yeah, I'm good with that. I like that. It's a good start um, That gets a lot lighter Up in and around the head here. So I'm gonna get out some of that white some of that great green gray I had mixed up and I will uh, I will go a little higher here to the, to the top of the head. <laughs> hey Rob, good to see you again. And, and Joan, it's, it's probably not you, it's probably me. Um, 
because I was looking at my levels on the, the streaming program and I was like, those are just a lot lower and I have no clue as to why, but um, it just is for the moment. So I'm, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to speak up. Maybe I'll uh, wake my wife up from her nap. <laughs> Hope not. Um, so she's got a little bit of distance, a couple of doors in between us. So um, this feels really blue under here. So uh, you know, I'm adding a little bit of blue uh, just directly, directly into it. Okay, uh, looking at it right now. Not much to look at. Um, that's okay. That's that's how it works sometimes. I think I'm going to pull out another brush so that I can make some uh, warmer decisions uh, up over here. Um, I don't want to lose some of that cool because I'll probably do some push and pull between some of the cooler colors and the warmer colors and kind of going uh, back and forth. So I uh, went ahead and got this basically the same brush, um, um, only uh, this one's fresh and ready to, ready to use. So I'm, I'm kind of taking a look right here uh, in the shadow, really nice, deep, dark, warm shadow uh, from that beautiful orange color that the Robin has. And um, I'll, I'll start there and I'll probably work my way up in here, get that shadow in. Um, and then we'll just slowly add, kind of working our way toward the light. I like this method uh, because um, it kind of keeps me on, on track. My, my values don't get too far off uh, when I work toward the light. It does tend to make things a little darker than they would be otherwise, um, but uh, for the most part, it keeps me on track. If I really want to get a nice dark warm, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll mix up, you know, mix mix my black here, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and I can lean it a little bit to the burnt sienna, but sometimes that makes it a little lighter. So I'll take a little alizarin crimson. Uh, in here and I can, you can get a nice warm dark uh, you know so that you know I got a little darker and I kept some of that, that warm it didn't get too red or uh, purpley on me but it, it really warmed that area up and uh, I'll, I'll be a lot happier about that ultimately okay um, so I feel like I've gotten that dark bit in there I'm going to mix and think about this whole section here where I think it gets a little lighter, a little orangey. Um, that's about the same thing that's happening here in the cast shadow of the head and the beak. Um, and yeah, I think, I think we're going to, we're going to end up all right here. And we'll, we'll make some adjustments kind of as we go. We'll get the light on this side to slowly working our way there. All right, Rob, questions. I love it. Thank you. Um, uh, is is Grizai? Yeah, sure. Yep. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> you you spelled it uh, phonetically so that I could understand it. Yep. Um, hmm. So it's interesting. He's telling me the audios. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, is only used for paintings that aren't complicated. Hmm. Okay. Um. I I, I would say it really depends on what you want to achieve. Um, I like when, when I'm doing figurative work, uh, skin tones and things like that, I like to do more of the grisaille. I like to have that built up dark and light. Um, whereas this painting, I'm not as so concerned about having that under layer to give me some of those see-through effects that can be achieved with if you have a grisaille or you have an underpainting, um, sometimes you can, you know, you can paint a more of a transparent layer and, you know, get some really nice effects of like kind of light traveling through that color and then hitting that, that uh, foundational grisaille layer. And, and that's fun and a lot of cool stuff can happen there, but I'm a little more when it comes to like this, the stack of bricks, and this is going to be painted much more a la prima and, you know, I may go over it again. It just kind of depends on if it's working or not. If something's not working, then I will, uh, then, you know, then I may say, okay, let's, uh, let, let's try that one more time uh, and kind of see, see where it goes.
All right, I'm gonna try to get this uh, warmer color in here. It's a little more orange. I'm not, I don't wanna lose my orange. Just get a little bit of that yellow. Yeah, it's a little too light, um, but it's a good start. And a little, little high in chroma for my liking. So a little, little too much color saturation there. Um, but, you know, birds, kind of one of those things you can't go too wrong uh, if you want to uh, pump up a little more color. Okay, similarly, underneath the beak here, uh, I think I want to add a little more, just a little more yellow to it. I think it's a little lighter than, say, the shadow here. Um, we may have to darken that now that I'm looking at it. Yeah. It's a little bit a little darker here. And you see, I wanted to keep it warm, and I just needed to darken it, um, but keep it warm. So, you know, I just... It's a fairly easy move, right? Burnt Sienna. Um, I can come in here. I can work into what I've already put down, kind of mix it in, uh, and let that shadow be cast. All right, so I want this to make sense. I, I, I want to get somewhere. So I'm going to take my next step, and I'm going to get um, another brush, and I'm going to start working on some uh, some lighter areas here because I really wanted to start to describe this start to describe some of the light falling on the feathers here um, so that I can start to see this the whole thing see it modeled get it kind of like all right if I want to make informed decisions about what to choose next and what to do then I, I want to make sure that I, I have uh, put it put in my work and gotten most of the things in so we can really begin rendering it and you know making it look nice <laughs> oh, th thanks, Rob. Thanks for the, the encouragement on my answer. Um, so, so, so I guess maybe you know to your to your point of like, does it, um, is it more more complicated or more complicated subjects? You know, it, to a degree, yes. I mean, I think skin tones are more complicated than this. But you can, I mean, I could do this a very similar approach. To this rather than you know the last step uh, my stream two weeks ago like I you know I could do the same thing um, and and you know you, you'd get some really great effects and uh, it's it's all possible I think when I've done birds animals with fur I like to keep it a little more loose I like the brush stroke to be a little looser uh, I think it gives energy and life uh, to to the to some of the things that we, some of the phenomena we see when we, we look at birds and animals. Um, and yeah, I, I, and I like, I guess I, in contrast, I like the almost waxiness that you can create when doing skin tones, um, doing kind of the grisaille or indirect method. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be the direct method. We're gonna try to get all this in there and you know along the way here you know i always say this but i really mean it along the way here i'm gonna get it wrong i'm gonna have to come in here i'm gonna, I'm gonna have to come in with some small details um but i won't want to get so detailed so as to lose um lose great energy uh and you know it's, it's, it's like leaving some life out there if i don't if it's a little loose, if it's, um, I, I like the term, I don't know that it means much, but I like the term like painterly. Uh, so we still see some mark and we still see some, some of the energy there. Um, and, and as you can see, you know, we haven't done a whole lot. Um, there's gonna be some little things I'm gonna pay attention to, like uh, there's, there's some tufts here that have a little bit of shadow that come out in, in, the, in the red breast area that are really, really nice especially like along here and we'll we're going to cue into those uh and uh, um yeah it, it'll be good be ex exciting hopefully uh hopefully we get something by the end of this that's like oh yeah well um uh, no, no promises <laughs> i i was uh watching the olympics uh, a little earlier and um one of the announcers was saying 
you know, because uh, it was for the biathlon. And the announcer was like, you know, some days are just not as good as others. And, uh, you know, you, you shoot bad this day or, you know, your body's just not responding when you're trying to cross country ski or uh, or all those things. And, you know, it was just, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, I mean, sometimes painting just <laughs> it's not happening. Um, okay. All right, so I got a little bit of light there, a little bit of color. That's exciting. Um, yes, Joan, okay, let's see. Question, does Grisai only refer to gray tone or can it refer to sienna or other single color paint? Yeah, so um, I tend to do sienna, yep. I I like a little bit of warmth. Well, it, you know, wow. There's, I mean, this is, this is a great question because you know, again, um, I don't want to sound like a broken record every time I'm on one of these streams, but people people do it in different ways. Um, so, uh, like, I know, I think his name, oh, it's going to escape me now. Um, I, think it's, I think his last name starts with a G. He does, he does kind of a, almost a green, a green and white grisaille. And then he paints his warm skin tones on top of that green and it creates some really great effects because he's really playing between those warm and cool colors and so i would say i would say there's no rules it the the term might mean grisai may well i think because i think i don't know here's where i'm just gonna show ignorance i i can't remember if grisai has to do a little bit uh with uh g-r-i-s is like you know, gray in the love languages. So, um, you know, some people call it the dead layer as well. The, so I think there's a lot of terms for it. And yeah, I, I, I see the main purpose, at least in my work, um, as trying to capture um, the, the main value relationships so that when I start putting my color on top of it, I can see, oh, uh, okay, yeah, this is a little darker here, this is a little lighter here, um, and that just, it, what, what it does is, you know, oil is always see-through, even when it feels like, you know, mostly working opaque here, but uh, in this layer is still showing through. And so if I have a grisaille layer underneath, um, you know, I immediately have a little more oomph uh, un underneath my work. Um, and and I, to me, that's the big value of doing it. Um, yeah, there's certainly, you know, rules, rules and names and things. Those are all, they, they, they can vary a lot. All right. I'm going to build up a little bit of this area here. Uh, I'm not trying to do too much. Um, I don't, but I know that I need to do a little bit underneath here and there's some kind of darker areas here along the side of the head. And I believe if I can merely just make out, um, the other eye here, it's kind of dark. Um, I think that's what that is. All right. Did I finish the painting? Yes, I did finish the painting. Um, I, uh, I, I have yet to release it or show it to anybody yet, uh, but yes, I did finish it. Um, I put some, some gold leaf uh, on it in these the kind of lines that I thought would be interesting for the composition. Um, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see if um, the uh, ju judges think so, but um, I, I thought it made the piece a little more... Um, uh, just give it a little more content um, than just you know your standard. Uh, if 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 I didn't have such a crazy setup here, I'd be happy to bring it over, <laughs> but, I, but I don't think I can. I so um, so like right here is the palette that's kind of sticking up, and then camera's like right here, uh, and I would have to fit uh, the painting within this space. So uh, I I will share it though. Um, eventually it'll if if you don't already. Uh, I, I've got I, um, share on Instagram, you know, I've got my Instagram account um, and I, it will end up there eventually, I promise. So if you get the opportunity to um, hop on Instagram, 
find me just with EW, EVWIAI, just like the channel here. And uh, it, uh, it'll, it'll be on there bef before long, I guarantee it. Um, and let's see. I had a thought. I lost it. It's gone. Let it go. <laughs> um, okay, so still kind of working my way around. Uh oh. Hey, you got some. Uh, hey, Rosemary makes very, very nice brushes. Um, I, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of a synthetic user, and so uh, I, I have not tried their synthetics. I tried some of, um, I've got some of theirs, and you know. Well, John, I think you can, uh, you can just go on down the road and find them because they're located in the UK somewhere. I, uh. I believe, if, unless I'm remem remembering weird. Um, so that's kind of nice. Uh, so yeah, I, I hope you like them. I mean, they're, they are they really are the brushes of, of most professional painters. Um, people really people really like them. I've I've gotten really into the habit of using these mixed synthetics, and I've I've just I've been like, wow, this is just the the brush that I like. And I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Not sure why, um, but I like kind of like the shape and the stiffness, and you know, feels like it's feels like it's working. So, so, so I hope they, I hope they uh, work really well for you. And uh, last time I ordered rosemary brushes, they they sent uh, some chocolates with my brushes. Did you get chocolates with your brushes? Yeah, it honestly, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I, I didn't have an opinion about brushes or even really, I, I hadn't really decided that, yeah, these are, these are the brushes that I like. I didn't really, maybe in the last couple of years and I've been painting for, um, for over 20 years and I really didn't have an opinion or I, I wouldn't have been able to tell you, oh, I really like such and such brush or I really like uh, sp uh, particular shapes or sizes or cuts, uh, whether it be filbert or flats or I, I tend to like, so since I am going for a, a brushier look here, I mean, I am mostly using flats because I want some angle. I want some hard edge, um, I, but I do have plenty of filberts, uh, but I'm going to probably stick with the flats for, for this because I kind of want it a little more angular. And, uh, and so, but for me to think in those terms, I didn't really begin thinking in those terms uh, in the last few years. Uh, so I am, I, I, I always just kind of used the brushes I had. In fact, Early on, when I started full-time painting, a, a really nice lady uh, gifted me a lot of stuff because she she had worked for Windsor Newton, and she was and she just had tons of their product, and she was like, "Hey, I'm I'm not really using these anymore, and if they'll if they'll benefit you, um, then you're welcome to have them." And I, I swear, I got, I got a, I got the biggest drawer full of brushes that it took about seven uh, years to paint through, um, and and now they're pretty much gone. And so I had to say, oh well, I've now I've got a, I've really got to decide what I what I do like, um, and and I've always liked these uh, brushes from Utrecht. Okay, so um, already, uh, you know, there's there's a little bit of weirdness happening here uh, that we're gonna have to sort out. Um, but uh, you know, our main shape and form, I mean, it's happening. And and I know I could call this video the easy way. Um, it does not take too much to just get a few shapes together, leave some of that brush work loose, and uh, and then kind of watch what what happens. Um, and watch that, hey, it just slowly starts to appear. 
So I'm adding a little bit of the light, some of the, kind of, and you know, all I did was kind of flick the brush here a little bit, you know, just add a little bit of that in here. Um, this, this bottom edge down here, I'll take my white. It still feels like a cooler gray. So, you know, I had my kind of cooler gray here. I'm just gonna mix in there and gonna kind of do the same here, this area. And then underneath, starts to get a little and right on this edge there is a nice kind of greenish yellowy greenish um, where where I think where it kind of turns and then on the underside it gets a little warm um, and even though this wasn't originally on a brick it was in kind of a warmer setting the image so I'm gonna just take a little bit of this, mix in some of my green, gray, and some of this warm here, and just get a little bit of a shadow on the underside here. Well, I didn't get as uh, dark as I was hoping. That happens. There's a little more light up here. I'm kind of looking, I am looking. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna create a little bit of a light area here. And and one one of the things that has not happened yet is I haven't painted any of the background color in. I will do that before I get done today because I'm gonna want to work in some of these brushes into um, some paint so that I'm not just working against this. So I will. Uh, kind of fill in that gray and try to get that value right against some of the value that I have of, of the bird here just so that we can really work into another color rather than just kind of leave that edge you know really clean you didn't get chocolate oh man <laughs> Well, we, we all have our favorite chocolates, uh, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to really decide what I want to do next. I um, think, um, yep, I, I want to fill in this area. So let's go ahead and do that so that I don't have any area that's unfinished. It's a little lighter, but still gray, and it kind of moves up into, and I, and I want it to be a little warmer since these these red bricks here will be warm, and there'll be some kind of ref, there'll be reflected light, uh, so we'll want to keep it a little warm under here, and and that's something too that I can adjust when um, when I get more more painted. Uh, that's you know that's something that doesn't have to be uh, oh you know say oh that's that's it that's you know that's what it is so I'm gonna make a decision here so I see this little kind of fun fun shape here and the, there's a little bit of a break I'm just gonna lay that was just like one two strokes I'm gonna lay it there now I'm going to begin looking. I think my drawing overall is not as wide as the source. So I need to I need to make some informed decisions as to where I want these edges to fall. And in order to do that, I'm gonna fill in some areas around it. So I'm just gonna now I'm just gonna get out a, a filbert here. And I might might get up my I want to mix up a little bit of a color. It does, there is a gradation. The gray is darker up here, gets lighter as it goes down. Um, but I'm just going to mix up a pile of my black. And just add a little bit of gray so that I can work into a color. Um, and and you'll notice as soon as I do this too, there's just a little bit of a sense of space. And I will be able to make more informed decisions onto really what's happening here color-wise. So 
So if you're watching this video in like, uh, you know, two years from now, notice how, you know, in 30 minutes, we, we basically built this up. Um, and, and yeah, this is, it's not done. It's not, uh, it's not there yet, but kind of the main relationships, fast and loose, uh, were, were put in and, um, you know, I, I'm, it has energy right now. I don't want to work it so much that it doesn't have energy. Um, and so that'll be, that'll be the challenge next. Okay. I'm kind of taking a look here. I might want to add just a little more RCM to that. So when I make the gray, I'm the titanium white. Doesn't take much, does it? And you know, it goes a long way slowly. I'm, I'm carefully looking. I'm going to try to get the gray that I see above uh, the robin's head, the value wise. Um, so one thing I'm kind of doing is I'm comparing it to the, the dark beak. And I'm, you know, I want to make sure that I get that value right. Because there's some fun things happening. Um, it's definitely darker. So I don't know if you remember last time, since we, since all the three of us were hanging out last time, I mean, uh, the, uh, we're, you know, if we have a lighter form here and a darker form back behind, you know, darker color back behind, this is going to jump forward. So lights come forward, darks recede. Um, and so, yeah, that, and also, uh, chromatic colors come forward and low chromas recede. So if we put a gray, which has practically no chroma back behind this lighter and more intense colored breast of the Robin, then all of a sudden this is gonna come forward. Cause right now this is, this is actually a lot of uh, chroma here um, in this color layer. I mean, this is an orange, you know, that is even though it's raw umber, it was just rubbed in, but it still has a lot of color to it. As soon as we knock that down some, uh, I think we're going to see this start to sit in space. Um, so here goes nothing. Thanks, Joan. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're very kind. I, you are all so nice. So, so fun to hang out with everybody who's enjoying their evenings in Europe. Uh, <laughs> every Everyone is... Uh, which, which is, you know, this is the best time for me to do it. Probably not the best time for everyone in the States uh, uh, who's, who's, who's working at the moment. But um, all right, I'm going to start to put some of this in here. And I'm going to kind of come right up next to it to some of the areas where we, we were working. And this color may change too, you know, when I, when I get in here and I start working, um, working the rest of this. But I just thought, you know what, today is a great day to paint the bird, even though it's a little bit out of order. I don't normally kind of work in this order, but I thought, you know, it's been two weeks since I've been on and I, and I, I like to try. Uh, I don't know how successful I've been at it. Well, I, well, let's be honest. I haven't been successful at all. Uh, but I, I like to try to get on once a week. Um, but a lot of times it doesn't make a whole lot of sense uh, because either I'm working on an area that I don't think will be very interesting for a video or, uh, or I'm just like, well, I, you know, I've done this in the, I've kind of done a lot of that in the past or, oh, here's another... A picture of this person or that person um, and uh, you know I like to try to get some new things out there so uh, yeah it doesn't happen every week I'd like for it to happen at least once a week and because I, I think you know that's helpful um, gives everyone a rhythm that they certainly know hey I know uh, Vince is going to be on. Yeah, I go by my middle name. That's one. Maybe I don't. I, I've not said that enough, but I go by my middle name. Uh, I'm I'm the third, and and so when you, when you're the third, you have to come up with a lot of uh, interesting ways to uh, 
keep everyone straight in the family. All right, everyone starts going by different names. So, so yeah, go by middle middle name Vince. So there's there's a there's a a, a little known fact. Um, and uh, yep. So I say, let's Vince, let's get more live streaming going. Let's figure it out. Okay, so I did not go take these a little short. I'm gonna take these a little longer here. But okay, so this is good because now I can see a little bit of what's happening. Um, and that's uh, way better. Um, I'm gonna need to fill in uh, this uh, this background color. Um, probably, well, we'll just kind of see how the day goes. Um, I might be able to mix more of that and fill that in later on my own time. That's That's kind of one of those watch paint dry sort of things that people uh, don't get terribly enthusiastic about. <laughs> what? You're gonna, I'm going to watch you paint uh, a bunch of gray? <laughs> Just a, a gray background? I can do better things with my time. Um, okay. So already, um, you know, I, I'm, we've, get, we've given, we just used color, you know, and, and I think sometimes this is a, an important thing to remember in, in your painting. You might be working on an area and you're like, what, you know, why isn't this working? Um, and, you know, I just did a little bit of work in giving it a sense of space. In this case, it was just a color, but that color put the robin in, in a spot. Um, it might, the color's probably not quite right, right yet. And I, I don't think it is. I've got, I've got some work to do, but at least now it's, I've got a space, I've got paint that I can work back into. So I can take this if I need to adjust a drawing by moving it in some, I can do that. Um, you know, I can take some of my colors and, you know, kind of soften my brush stroke into wet paint. And I think that is great for especially what we're doing. We know, you know, kind of feather texture, we're gonna want some of these soft edges here and there to really help uh, help with des description. Okay, let's, uh, let's do, we're gonna hop around, correct a few things. Um, drawing wise uh, that I think just need a little bit like this. I saw something right away I wanted to adjust. Um, I, I, gotta, I gotta give this little Robin a shoulder. You know, it's a, a, a little too, yeah, a little more of a shoulder. Yeah, I don't wanna, I'm gonna feel just like a big blob. Although some of them look that way, very cute. Uh, when. <laughs> They're just like one big round sphere <laughs> in other pictures. Okay, uh, Rob, you had a question. Awesome. Let's see. Um, sometimes you mix colors with the brush and then other times with the palette knife. Is it uh, oh, when you need a little bit more of the paint that you use the brush? Um, okay, so great, 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 great question. Um, so I liked the use... I liked the use of the knife um, because I just wanted a bigger pool of that color. I knew that I was going to probably come back to it multiple times to, to work in some of this background color as I went back and forth. And so I just wanted a little more of it. That's it. And, and I said, okay, I'm going to use the knife, mix up this other color pool so that it's mostly like the tube colors um, and I can come back and jump into that. So like, yeah, so like I have some of my black mixed here. I have some of that gray, that background color gray mixed in. And now I can jump, jump into that if I, if I need more of it. Um, and sometimes though, uh, Rob, I'll, I'll do it differently. I may, and, and this is really, I, I recommend this too, you know, to develop a, a practice, you know, things you normally do. But then as soon as you develop the practice, uh, shake it up. So sometimes I like to mix up a bunch of colors, like, uh, and I'll use the palette knife and I'll just do varying mixtures of my palette, my limited palette, and I'll splay those out and then I'll use those and I'll work from those. And then I don't do as much mixing as I go. And then sometimes I say, no, I'm just gonna tackle this straight, straight on and, and kind of let people see what mix happens and how it works and how my mind thinks with like, oh, I wanna change this color. Well, I sort of have it mixed here. I just need to add a little bit of this color to this one. And then that changes the way that works. Um, so um, as soon as you figure something out and you, you have a good method, 
make sure to switch it up and and try something new. Um, every time that I've tried something new, uh, it seems like there's just something that uh, comes about that it's like, oh, that, you know, hey, that's better, uh, or that's a that's a new way of doing it, and and I think I like it. So I wanted to extend these uh, feathers out a little bit. Um, I used to always, well, I, yeah, it's back and forth. I, sh I, sh I shouldn't say always. So I, back and forth, I, I first, when I first studied um, painting uh, back in the late 90s, I, uh, I did painting from life. And, you know, that's, that was how, how I learned what I've learned is painting, painting the live model. And that, that experience, uh, there was no pre-mixing, you know, I just, I just had what I had and I had to make it work. Um, so I was just mixing much like this, just mixing as I go and applying color. Um, and hoping that you know, A, I get my drawing right, B, I get the values right on the figure, and, you know, and and really just getting a little more uh, familiar with, you know, how, how it all works. Uh, and and then when I started kind of more of my studio practice, uh, I began, before I'd work on a section, uh, because I was largely working from photographs um, or still life, I had the time that I could mix up color pools kind of like this. I could mix up a bunch of these so that they would be seen. Uh, and so that I could say, okay, yep, I can I can come back into that color, put it a little bit here. Oop, I think it's a mixture of this color with a little bit of this tube color and then come back in there. So um, I guess my, my answer to that one long winded answer is to, yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a little bit of both. Uh, sometimes, you know, do it one way, sometimes do it another and uh, kind of see, see see what makes sense. Um, and then as, basically as soon as you figure it out, you know, try something new. <laughs> so you keep learning. Hey, Joan, if I didn't get to see you or say goodbye, if you didn't hear me, thanks again. Yep. <laughs> I, I do need a, I do need some Guinness, uh, you know, it's been a while. All right, I'm, I'm gonna get this uh, this a little darker and a little redder because certainly right here it's very red and I don't wanna just add black to get the um, the the dark, uh, this kind of dark red. I don't wanna just make it black for black's sake. I'm like, oh, it just needs to be, uh, I just need to add black to this to make it darker. I think I can get a lot of color in it uh, using some of the uh, alizarin crimson um, and some of the mixed black, and we can uh, just put that in here. I think to my drawing, I think we have a little more of a, a, a little bit of a pot belly here on this robin. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start just taking that line out, uh, that edge, working directly into that gray um, so that it, it is a little farther out. I don't think I quite had him wide enough in my drawing, and I and and as as you saw at the beginning, I had a grid system, and that grid was um, at least here uh, every one and a half inches um, because I just wanted to make sure that I anatomically s stayed on track. Also, um, I like to use grid systems too because I, I build up, and so someday here's here's another plan too. Someday I plan to have. Uh, kind of go through every step of the process, do a video on every single, this would be a release, released videos, not live streaming, but maybe live streaming at some point, of just every step of the pro, every step of the way, uh, how I kind of get to here. Um, and and so when I, I, oftentimes I build the compositions in Photoshop where I can see, uh, I can almost see the painting done. Yes, you know, some artists are, you know, really against using photos, and uh, and and I understand understand why. Uh, there's there's a lot of danger in using the using photos. You kind of uh, a lot can go wrong, um, and so that's why I think it's it's good it's good and healthy to study from life and learn how to paint from life. And then when you 
kind of understand how some of the things work in life uh, to then, you know, begin using photos more. Um, I forgot where I was. Um, so yeah, so when I'm building it digitally, I, I have the ratio of the canvas I'm going to use in the Photoshop and I, you know, I, I put the pieces together and I don't want to lose, um, where I've decided to place everything. So I will grid it and then draw against the grid just so that I don't like, you know, say for instance, if I started drawing the stack of bricks, which I know you can't see, but it's a stack of bricks underneath this little guy. Um, if I started to misdraw them or, you know, if I began on one end and started working on the other, um, there is just the chance of like losing some of the composition that I've built and I've already spent time agonizing over, uh, because I do ag agonize over, it. um, and, you know, I'm constantly building and saying, okay, is this better than this way? Is this better this way? What if it's mirrored? You know, what if I flip the whole thing? Does it create better energy? Um, and, you know, those are all the, the big long questions and the thing, ways in which that I uh, battle with myself before, before beginning, before even getting to this part. So, so yeah, the, the grid system is, is helpful to, for transferring um, you, you, the drawing, but then it also gives me um, just that ever, ever so little bit of help to me stay on track so I don't start really getting off and losing my composition. All right, excited with how this little guy's coming along. Um, oh, it's, this is always the tough part. Um, you know, how much more detail do I, I put in for the video? Because sometimes I, I think, um, you know, we're, we're sort of getting to a, a point where it is, it's kind of okay the way it is, you know, and it could be an hour long video. Or do I work out just a little more of some of these things down here that I see? Um, because I am mixing images, so the the little robin is from another image, and I'm, I'm you know, kind of superimposing it on um, a still life that I made. Uh, you know, there's going to be things that I'm I'm going to have to invent. There's just no way around it. There's going to be invention, um, like hey, like how does the light bounce around on this robin in this space, not the space that, um, not the space that the original photograph uh, came from, um, and that's that's the tough that's the tough part. Is because sometimes you're like, oh, well, I think this will work, and you're like, well, no, that. That didn't work. I definitely want to get this uh, this kind of break. This is really nice bit of texture, and we know we know there's like the uh, musculature underneath there, even though we can't quite see it. Um, but at this point, making sure that I have worked into the gray uh, is really important because it, we don't have any more of that uh, ground layer showing through. And that's really helpful for, you know, we're, we're trying to create an illusion here. You know, I talk a lot about that, you know, we're, we're creating illusions and, you know, every bit of little ground layer that's sticking out here uh, causes some of, some of that to ha be, some of that illusion to be lost. Because uh, we're going to really work work into it. So you know, if I just kind of try to cover up some of those, you know, just increasingly it works better and better. And feels like it's there, and like we have a kind of a darker gray wall back behind. Rob, I love your questions. Thank you for asking them. This is great. Do you have to buy opaque and transparent colors? Can you mix the transparent colors into the opaque colors? I realize this is a, a no. This is this is not newbie question. Um, I I tell you what, I I didn't think about 
transparent and opaque colors for the longest time. Um, I just said, well, it's a color. I'm going to mix it. I'm going to put it down. Um, and so, I mean, talk about a, a newbie approach. That was, I just went out and did it. Um, I didn't do my research. I just thought, I thought more in terms, I, I thought like an impressionist. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing here too. You know, we're, it's all surface, it's all color on the surface. We're mixing it together. Um, the, uh, the transparent and opaque start to make a little more sense, I think, when it comes to the grisaille method. Um, because the transparent colors are, I think, are going to make better glazes uh, than the opaque colors. And in, in my, in limited, because I don't always work that way, and I, I readily admit <laughs> that I just sort of bumble my way through uh, the, uh, these, these processes um, until something works. I, and, and I don't know, maybe, maybe it's kind of like the, like the tinkerer in me or something. Like I just like to tinker and try new things until something is there. Um, so it's just sort of fun to not get it right. And then sometimes we'll be like, whoa, what just happened? Um, so there's a little bit of magic um, that uh, that can occur. Um, I, so if, I, don't, I don't know that I have a really good satisfying answer for you. Um, I know when it, so one of the other powers of the grisaille or um, that, that I've experienced personally in painting over the years is like for for mixing up some of the darker colors uh, that are in the background, I could use more, I could intentionally, if I, I, I don't do this, but I think I could intentionally use uh, transparent colors. So this is a transparent color, that's a transparent color. Um, these two are transparent colors. Here's opaque, opaque, and these are kind of in between, probably still mostly transparent and opaque, 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 opaque. Uh, and the rest are really pretty transparent. Um, one thing you could do, especially, you know, if you're building up like a white grisaille, uh, you, what you have is, is you have this opaque buildup, you know, right here. And then if you use your transparent colors with multiple layers, uh, back here, you'd essentially have kind of light traveling through that transparency. And, and, th and this is, this, I think this is also why some of the like paintings of the Renaissance and Baroque are so incredible is because they're using these opaque pigments and paint, uh, areas like in the figures and, and then they're using many layers of dark transparent color over here. So light is just kind of moving into those dark colors but then the light is like hitting and running into the opaque. And so there is a physicality to it. And then you can do that with paint too. You know, there, there's also a physicality of, you know, they just painted these areas thicker and then they oftentimes made the backgrounds a little more thin. So there was even a paint body effect to that, that, um, that illusion. Uh, it's, I mean, it's just so amazing to kind of see and think about what, what those guys, you know, what they were on to, uh, way back then without all the tools and stuff that I use. It's incredible. Yeah, I hope, I hope that was helpful. Um, I realize it's not the clearest answer because I don't know that I, I have one or that I have that much of an opinion about it. <laughs> Rob, you're, 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 you're being pretty nice. Uh, I, well, I think I think when it comes down to it, um, it's just it's just fun. Painting is, is fun, and if I I try something new, oftentimes I'll uh, and I'll just throw it throw it down, or I'll be a little more loose in one area and just and just see where it goes. Uh, and if if it's you know if it's not somewhat enjoyable and fun, then you know as as all as everyone says, it's, you know. Then, then don't do it if you don't if you don't enjoy it. Um, when it comes to you know hobbies and that sort of thing, sometimes yeah we've we've got to work we've got to 
do the thing, things we've got to do. But all right, I need to get this uh, shadow a little darker underneath uh, this beak, and it's definitely a cast shadow, which is great. Uh, I really want to capture that uh, because uh, on the bricks here, I've I've set up the light scenario so that it it matches, and that's going to be some of the, the strongest parts of it is if I if I really get that going. So let's see here. I've made the head a little wider than I should, I think, on this side. Yeah, that's a little funny. So again, again, I got some of the gray. I'm going to use it. I'm going to paint right over what I what I did, where, where kind of where I put that eye, and yep, it's just right on top of that. And because it wasn't so much paint, I could do it, and it, it mixed into the gray, and you know, it wasn't all the world didn't crumble, <laughs> uh, which it some can sometimes can. Um, so I wanted to get that shadow a little more. And I'm going to have to get out some smaller brushes and really work on some of the detail in here at some point. I don't know that I'll do it uh, here just because it's such a, such a longer process. And uh, I think uh, when it comes to videos, you want to really see, let's, let's, you know, let's see it happen. And, and really when we want to make the magic happen, we just need to put the, the gleam on the beak and the gleam in the eye. And then you know, this thing will come to life as it just has not before. I like to save those moments for for later because I'm thinking, okay, um, it's just something to look forward to, to kind of do put the work in and then get to that place and be like, oh yeah, there it is. Um, there's a little bit of light that's really bright, right on this other side of the beak. Uh, and I want to make sure that I, Kind of capture it, make it feel like that light is up there. I'm gonna have to get more specific up there at some point. I'm losing some of my specific areas. Trying to get in behind that eye. Get some of that gray up there, because it is just a little bit, a little bit of a sheen. Um, and rework. Uh, let's let's see what happens here. I'm gonna I'm just gonna go for it. So I think there's there's uh, this kind of blue here on the the side of the beak. We're gonna try to just put that in there. Get a little bit of a shape. Add one more layer or level or plane to that just to see what happens. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good that's a good point, Rob. The like, the you know, these guys were just on you know on something else. You know, when they were thinking about how to use a physical paint body to help model, and and so I and so I like to think. I think a lot about this. You know, when when I'm painting, or even when I'm talking to other people about their work. Stack the deck in your favor. Uh, um, you know we're, uh, as I've said, if you're if you're painting realism, you're we're, we're just we're just an illusionist. We're just kind of we're trying to you know I'm no one looking at this painting is gonna say to me oh I thought there was a real bird in there. <laughs> uh, you know they're gonna know it's a painting just by looking at it. Um, but I am trying to give the illusion of the space and. Um, and so if, if I want to really play with space, then I want to do the things that, those, those few things that you, we know can happen. So lighter colors come forward, darker colors recede. Um, 
bright, well, more saturated colors, so uh, higher chroma colors like this yellow and the orange, much more saturated than this gray comes forward, the gray recedes. Um, and then warm colors, warm colors come forward, cool colors re recede. So we've got these nice warm colors. And if I make this kind of a nice warm green up here, again, it'll, it will, this will come forward, this gray that is cooler will go back. Then, if we do kind of like you were talking with the effects of Rembrandt, if I were to take this, do all those three things that I just did, and give this a bigger, thicker paint body with, you know, thin, smooth layers out here. I mean, you've done four things um, that have nothing to do with painting necessarily, painting it, but those effects like start stacking. And it's like, oh, okay. Um, this is really starting to feel like it sits in space, that it's really in there, even though, yes, I, I know it's a painting. We all know it's a painting. Um, but it, there's just ways to help yourself out <laughs> um, in, in painting. And I, I don't always think about it, um, but, I, but I think probably subconsciously it's the way my mind works when, when painting you know, finding as many of those uh, areas. Where you can really take advantage of those color shifts. Okay, I, th I think we're ready for a little glint in his eye, I think. Um, and, and to do this, I'm, I'm just going to take, uh, I'm going to get like just one little bit of, you know, I got a little tiny brush here, um, you know, one little lump. And I'm just going to put it right, I'm trying to look where it is in the eye. You know, and then just kind of let that gleam right. Right up, just kind of gives, suddenly gives a little more life. I can do that elsewhere too. You know, I think some of, um, I can take some of the white and some of the yellow we were working on earlier. Um, I think just some of those areas here just have a little more of that light. It's really kind of falling right there. And then there's another bunch of it right there. Um, and, and this, in, in pursuing this here, this part here, where it can really start to create some of the areas where it feels like, oh yeah, oh, the light is, uh, it's like hitting this plumage and, you know, there's just kind of light striking it and, oh, that's, and that, this area is underneath the feathers of, of that area. And I, you know, I didn't, I didn't do much. Like, I, I think that's, that's like, I, I can keep wanting to call this video the, like the easy way. Like, I, you don't have to do a whole lot um, for it to feel like now uh, the lights hitting these, uh, the feather layers and there's just kind of like little, little hills uh, coming down. Um, it's a lot lighter in and around the eye there. Um, so just kind of paying attention to some of those little parts. And you know, I don't know how much more detail in some of the areas I, I you know, that I'll really try to go, um, cause it'll, I'll, I'll end up working. <laughs> yeah, that, that's well. Um, the 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 one the I th I think the eye video is pretty good, uh, Rob. Or um, it, the beginner's oil painting video is kind of funny too. I mean, I I think it's funny. I'm. Uh, I wish I could have been, been a comedian. <laughs> uh, and um, the the beginner's oil painting video, I, I just work with 
uh, white and, and black. And I, I paint a cast. Um, and, and I think that might be one of the better ones to, to start off with. Um, and just kind of uh, work one on one with. And, and two, it's nice because it's, uh, it, it only is about its value. You know, we're, uh, I kind of, I think I maybe talked about it two weeks ago, where it is a little nice when we only have to think about one attribute value rather than thinking about color saturation and temperature as well. We just think about value alone. Um, you know, that uh, I, I think can be, be helpful because sometimes it's, it's a lot at once. It's a lot to begin to take in at once. And um, I think that, that that those might be the good ones. Probably that, probably the eye or the, the beginner's oil painting video. So, and I, I know you're not a beginner. Um, so I'm not trying to, uh, you know, I'm not trying to say that, um, but, I, but I think those are those are good starts. And these are just little decisions that I'm starting to make. You know, I really want to begin to, you know, yeah, we've got this like it's almost a sphere, but then you know the way the feathers work. There's like little, it's almost like little spheres, you know, embedded into that big sphere. And so we're going to try to tell just some of that, each one of those little humps, each one of the little hills as they come around. Um, and, and in doing so, I'm going to capture the essence, you know, that, because uh, I'm always doing that, right? Trying to chase that essence of what it is I'm painting. Um, like what, what is the really important parts? uh you know of and just really honing in on those and saying okay this is this is where when i when i think of bird uh like this this is what works uh, this is really it with paint describes what a bird is um so my mind's always focusing a little bit on that a little bit of a lighter edge here. The light is hitting it. I don't want to get too bright just yet, but I want the light kind of hitting that side and almost feeling it. Um, all these uh, like wing, um, I, I wish I knew my bird anatomy. <laughs> that would be helpful. Uh, all these little uh, areas in here, I'm probably just going to do with just one mark like that. And it's going to describe that well enough that, that you know, we're not going to have to concern ourselves with doing much more. Okay, I am kind of hunt, hunting and I don't know if I'm making very good decisions right now or not. Um, It's kind of purple underneath here that just it's right underneath the breast. I like that. I want to get some of that in here. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay, I think I've got to probably get in some little brushes, probably describe the head a little better. Um, I may hop into, so uh, a lot of times I, I do have, I'll do, I will have black, you know, like um, ivory black on the canvas or on my palette, but I just don't go there until I feel like I've exhausted my mixed black. And I feel like if I've exhausted my mixed black, but I still see some areas that could really, the value could be really pushed a little darker, I'll get that out and just go ahead and add that in. Um, and I do see a few spots that I think would, would benefit from it. Uh, kind of along here and possibly there's a, it's kind of a reflected light on some of the tail feather. 
uh, and the area in between is like a little cast shadow that's really dark. And maybe the legs right underneath before the light hits um, into the feet. So, yeah, I think, yeah, it's just about an hour 20 minutes. I, you know, I, I think it's turned out okay. Hey, Rob, it's all good. Hey, thanks, thanks for wanting to even think about supporting. I, I appreciate that much, and I, it's all good. Um, again, the, the equipment and just some of the things that I've been able to do this have been made by good, you know, generous people. So this is me just saying, hey, I'm putting this out on YouTube. I realize that anyone can watch it at any time. So thanks for being a part. Just thanks for being here. And honestly, your questions are great. Um, I, you're making the videos 10 times better simply by asking great questions. So uh, I, I appreciate your presence here. Well, and, and Bob Ross is, is a different method, you know, uh, it's a different focus, a different, um, I mean, yes and no, he's going to use, he uses some of his tools a little differently and it's just, it's just all good, you know, uh, and you take away, I don't know, kind of like, I guess you take away the, the parts that you like from the painters that you, ad you admire, or you watch work and, and you say, okay. I'm going to put that into my practice somehow, some way. And yeah, and, and that's it. And then you become the painter uh, that you want to be um, by, uh, well, you're that unique mix of, you know, the, the 10 or so people that you really love uh, in art and, and that you've learned from. And that's, that's the beauty of it. Just like a good band, you know, like a, a good rock band or something, you, uh, every, you know, every musician that comes together has a unique love of particular songs and particular artists, and they are in their own way, slightly mimicking what the things that they love and know. And then suddenly, uh, four other people are doing that as well. And then you get this brand new sound that has never existed before. And to me, that's one of the coolest things about art music is you know even though people have painted like this forever um this is nothing new but i'm my own unique mixture you are your own unique mixture and man that's exciting stuff so um i i think this is a really good stopping point um you know the more that i think about it a little bit shorter video than normal but i i think i'm gonna have to really get into some small details and um, uh, I'll, it'll better, better serve me if I have uh, my, uh, if I don't have a camera on my forehead, <laughs> practically. Um, and so, uh, so Rob, I thank you so much. And, and Joan too, I know you had to head out. So I, I appreciate you as well. Um, I, I'm, I'll keep trying to do weekly, but I'm, but I'm always trying to find the things that I think will be um, helpful uh, and, and, and be exciting. If, if I get a chance, uh, to do some of the bricks, even though that's not as exciting as like a bird or say, you know, a face or a portrait, um, the, the concepts are all the same. It's just paying attention to the right details. I mean, there's, there's always tons of details. Like I, I could never exhaust myself painting this little Robin. I could find more and more details until I die. <laughs> um, and, and I could keep correcting it. Um, but I think it's a matter of looking for the right ones and entering the right amount of detail so that it really works. Um, uh, there's, there's the things that matter and the things that are just fluff. And finding those things that matter, I think, is really what it comes down to. And so that's probably my that's the big takeaway of today's video, and I hope uh, hope it was helpful for everybody. So, so Rob, you hey, thank you so much for hanging out today. Uh, we'll try to do it again, uh, maybe maybe next week. Um, maybe it might be early early next week. I might paint some bricks on here. Um, I don't know how many people will watch me paint bricks, but <laughs> we we we'll, we'll give it a go anyway. Uh, so cheers.
Thanks so much.